Well, don't try to change the subject again. Hide and seek with yourself. It ain't a game you can win. If you're gonna be down, boy, you got to be tough. Live with changed up places. You roll like a dime. Yeah, you hurt. Yeah, you hurt. Yeah, you know it ain't right, but I ain't going. Skyrim and music go hand in hand. From the city taverns, to the minstrels wandering the province, to the famous Bard's College of Solitude, song is inescapable. But in spite of this, there's not much the player can do in the game to interact with music directly. Sure, you can run errands for the professors at the Bard's College and collect lutes or drums, but you can't actually play instruments or learn the art of performance. That is, until you add mods into the equation. Thanks to the work of talented modders, Skyrim now has thousands of professional-grade add-ons that turn the game from a fairly restrictive narrative RPG into a full-on fantasy life simulator. This even includes mods for living as a musician and pursuing your own musical career. For more info on these mods, check the video description below. This is my journey from the bottom to the top of not just becoming another one of Skyrim's bards, but a rock star. I lived 50 days in ultra-modded Skyrim, starting from nothing, and came out the other side a musical legend. It's not entirely a story of triumphs, though. In fact, there's a much darker side to this tale, one that threatened at times to extinguish every hint of hope we had left. But I'm getting ahead here. That's not where this story begins. Like most stories do, the story of how I became a Skyrim rock star begins with day one. This is Jeremy. Jeremy's a fantasy protagonist, so naturally his name is spelled like this. Jeremy's a Breton from High Rock who would have been set to inherit a large estate. That is, if he hadn't just left all that behind. Instead, he's pursuing a new life as a musician, arriving in Skyrim's capital of solitude with little more than his loot and a dream. But solitude is a historic and thriving city, brimming with the arts and opportunity. Surely a hardworking young man with a dream of stardom can find his way to the top. As we head up toward the city gates, we realize that we're a bit underdressed for the cold climate of Northern Skyrim. I'm playing with survival mode, which means if we don't stay warm, well-rested, and well-fed, our stats will suffer. We'll need to find some warmer clothes in the coming days, once we've worked up enough gold to afford them. Upon entering Solitude proper, we make a beeline towards the Bard's College, one of the most iconic landmarks in the city. What better way to develop our musical skills than to study under a team of seasoned bard professionals? We're not totally sure how their audition process works, but we've already got hot cross buns down pat, so should be a cakewalk. When possible, we ask applicants to perform tasks the college needs completed. Elisif has forbidden the burning of King Olaf, a festival put on by the Bard's College. The portion of the Edda dealing with King Olaf might still exist in Dead Man's Respite. I need you to retrieve the poem. Um, that, okay, that sounds like a crypt? Uh, you know, I'm a musician. I wish you luck in finding the verse. Can't I just, like, audition? like a normal person? So, plan B. Okay, well that was unexpected, but no big deal. We can learn music without those dusty classrooms and stuck-up professors. We can do it right here on the city streets. Let's just head to the marketplace, bring out our loot, and strum a quick tune for some practice. All right, well, here we go. So, you know, it's it's like a, it's an A chord and then a C. Oh, okay, I missed a couple notes, but it, come on, guys. It's not as bad as... Can't take the pain. Uh, it's not, not that bad. I'm pretty good at this. Please, I can't. You're just morning. excuse just me. Go. That's so rude. What's so good about it? I'm just Need practicing. Something? It's not perfect yet. I'm working on it. How about a tip for the bard? Get away from me. Just a few coins. Mm -hmm. Please, I just need a few coins, come on. Get away from me. These people, they're, they're not willing to help out a, a, a musician in the making. 
Well, okay, so we're not getting into the college yet, and we may not be as good at the loot as we thought. Not off to a great start, but Jeremy's spoiled, stubborn, and brimming with unearned self-confidence. He's not giving up that easy. We'll be staying in the city for a while, so let's make sure we can find a place to sleep. The Winking Skeever Inn is as good a place as any to start our search. Ooh, well this is a nice place. Yeah, I think we could definitely feel at home here. They probably see a lot of bards coming through. We have a couple days worth of food left over from our travels, so we can live pretty cheaply right now, but we're really gonna need a way to make money soon. Fortunately, the Solitude City Management Office doesn't seem to own any weed whackers, so patches of alchemically useful plants are sprouting up all over the place. Let's harvest as many as we can and sell them. Hmm, is anyone using this? Oh, tomatoes. I don't know, it doesn't look like anyone, anyone's watching this. I guess it means it's ours. <laughs> Since the bards aren't gonna let us in, we're gonna take all their plants as vengeance. They'll have no oxygen. Oh, you aren't gonna pay me for these. Well, that's rude of you. Yep, just like I expected, they have a bard here. Did she have to also kill a bunch of zombies to get into the college? In the evening, we settle down to a dinner of leftover beef and apples back at the skeever. Our first day in solitude didn't go as we'd hoped, but that's all right. Learning is what first days are for. Yeah, who's this weird guy in the corner? You're a mercenary, aren't you? I, I fight with both blade and spell. Hmm. Have you ever explored a crypt? Tomorrow, we'll try practicing our loot in the marketplace again and see what sort of work we can find around town. Upstairs, a bedside story and a comfy bed await us, and so ends day one of our adventure. When we awaken on day two, we ask the innkeeper if he's heard of any work in town that would suit us. Here, take a look at this. Some of the Jarl's men came by and left this bounty letter. A bounty letter? Why does everyone think we're trying to go kill stuff? Maybe the local jobs board will be more helpful. We just need to find straightforward, short-term work that fits our, uh, limited skill set. Oh, we could bring a letter to Dragonbridge. Well, that's cool, Dragonbridge is super close. Now this is the kind of work I was talking about. Dude, come out of your house. I'm here to pick up a letter. Am I just gonna wait around all day for him? While we wait to pick up our delivery, let's at least get some more practice in. Maybe the city guards will appreciate a little musical accompaniment to their daily training. Okay, here we go. Let's play something something nice and simple. An easy tune. Ooh, ooh okay. I, I slipped up there uh, a bit. I, um, my finger slipped on the strings. No more. It's, no it's not more. that terrible. You know, we're out here in the rain. Might as well enjoy some music. Even the game is telling us that that was bad. Well, that just leaves more room for improvement. <gasps> he finally left his house. You wouldn't be a sellsword, would you? All right, so hand over the mail. Of it's course. it's going to get like soaked through at this point because it's raining, but I don't care. Fortunately, the rain lets up and we depart for Dragonbridge. We get to enjoy a sunny afternoon and take in some pretty great scenery. Our travels are hassle-free, and it's not long before we're approaching the little town of Dragonbridge. Now to find the recipient of the letter we're carrying. Hello there, Azada Lil V. Huh? I don't know how to pronounce your name. I have a letter for you. Thank you. Here, this is for you. 25 gold. Okay, that's it's not great, but it's enough mm, for a meal. Until next time. While we're in town, might as well bring out our loot again. Let's see if the locals are any more receptive to our art than the rich snobs of solitude were. Let's do this. Fine. What? This one's a little tricky. Oh. Oh, yeah, no, okay. Yeah, I think we kind of messed that one up pretty bad. Oh, I'm upsetting a horse. Interesting. Somebody do something. <laughs> I just love how terrible it sounds. Oh no. So I guess the answer to our question is no, they're not more receptive here. Ooh, that performance was so bad, it gave us a, a terrible headache effect. So our magic and stamina reduced and we're not gonna improve at music as much <laughs> until this is over. Back in Solitude, we sell some plants that we harvested during our trip for a few more coins, then try to beg for money again to no avail. Get away from me! Deliver a potion to Dragonbridge. That sounds right up our alley. Oh. Make it quick. Uh, citizen? She looks suspiciously like a vampire. We return to Dragonbridge as the sun is setting and soon locate the target of our delivery mission. Lil Vive again, is huh? that the, the wife of the of the guy who we brought the mail to? How would you appreciate um, a song as thanks for hiring us? Somebody do something! <laughs> I take it she does not appreciate it. We don't want to find trouble on the road after dark, but fortunately there's an inn right here in Dragonbridge, the Four Shields Tavern. We grab a room and call it a night. Sure thing. 
It's yours for a day. At least we made a bit of a profit today. We wake up and perform a quick tune for the tavern's breakfast crowd. Want something? After all, they say Need practice something? makes perfect. But we've also run into the issue that we're basically out of food, so we spend some of our pay from yesterday to get more from Corpulus at the Skeever. Protein is the most cost-efficient way to stave off hunger in survival mode, so we take two slabs of cooked beef and a horker loaf, whatever that is. I'll be just as good a bard as you are someday. To make up the gold we just spent on food, we stop by the general store. It's time to sell the last vestiges of our past life that we brought with us from High Rock. Two rings of minor value. There's no going back now. We've fully bought into our new life in Skyrim. But selling stuff is also a critical source of experience yes. for us because it advances our speech skill. Similarly, we Need gain something? points in speech through our continued attempts to beg for money. Get away speech will be me. the central skill for our playthrough, and in combination with the mods okay, I'm running, it'll once. let us do some pretty cool stuff later on. She gave us a tip when we asked for it. Maybe she'll hire us for a job. Maybe you can help me. Sure thing. Um, what do you need? It's all in this note. Okay, she needs us to bring a, a sword to someone in Dragon Bridge again. All right. Uh, I'll take all the jobs that brings to Dragon Bridge. They're so easy. Gerard offers speech training. Well, you've come to the right place. Okay, well, that's pricey. That could definitely be useful, though, to raise our speech skills. That's gonna be really important in this playthrough. I'll keep this in mind. Then it's off to Dragon Bridge for this new delivery mission. You are Horgir, I take Make it? Make yourself useful and chop up some firewood. Um, There's not a few right coins now. In it for you. Yeah, not right now. I have, I have a sword for you. You've done well. Great. Thank you. Here. Thank you very much, this sir. This is for you. He said he'd pay us to um, chop some firewood as well, so let's give that a try. All right, I have firewood here. Honest gold for honest work. How much are you paying me? Oh, wow. Wait. 30 for for that? Like, that was so quick. Uh, I I guess right, let's then. chop some more of that, because that was super easy. Perhaps you would enjoy a song as an expression of our appreciation. Somebody do something! <laughs> all right, well, that guy's not into it. I don't think Horgir... I don't think he complained at all, though. How about a tip? Okay, and just this And he's even going to give us a tip. I think he liked us. I think he liked us. Looks like we just made our first friend. At this point, we're getting tired and hungry, so we decide to hang out around Dragon Bridge the rest of the day. We harvest plants to sell and search for food supplies that folks have left lying about. Of course. Even the blacksmith's going to help us out. You know, I think people in Dragon Bridge are just nicer than people in Solitude. But the big win comes when we visit our new bestie's house. Since we chopped firewood for him, Horgir doesn't mind if we permanently borrow some of his stuff. So, naturally, we loot the joint. Oh, and Horgir, he has a loot! Well, that explains it. He's a fellow appreciator of the arts. I'm not gonna take his loot, though. I'm not gonna take a fellow, a fellow musician's instrument. Need something? Hey, friend, I just wanted to thank you so much for helping us out. How can I argue with that? I'm going to give him a gift of some kind. Um, all right, I'm going to give him a goat hide, which I'm pretty sure I took from his house. Yeah, I think he knows. <laughs> Our bag now stuffed with various snacks. We happily settle into bed at the tavern and call it a day. Even though we now have a bunch of food, it won't last as long as you'd think, because it's mostly fruits and vegetables, which restore much less hunger than meat does. We get in some more loot practice back in Solitude. Don't do that. Yeah, okay, I think I lost the cord there. Um, stay right there, I'll start over. Then we find Professor Germain to take him up on that offer of speech lessons. Purchasing one level of training gets us our first level up. But with survival mode, we can't use it until after we've slept. We take another delivery request, sending us back to Dragon Bridge. Hello there. Huh? It's you again. It's Julian Lilviv. This is like the family that, that always orders in off DoorDash, isn't it? We chop some more firewood for our buddy and help out a local farmer with the harvest. Honest pay for honest work. There's a surprising amount of gold we can make just by doing odd jobs, but we'd much rather be getting paid to perform. We'll get there soon. How about a tip for um, such a fine delivery job earlier? Okay, oh. just this once. Okay, I wasn't actually expecting anything. I appreciate it. After our night's rest in Dragon Bridge, we use that level up and take the first speech perk, which will let us sell items for a little bit more. Hey, come on, this one isn't nearly as bad. I think I'm improving. Yes. Day five, a nasty rainstorm breaks that traps us in solitude for the day. Guess we'll try to make some quick gold without leaving the city. We try our luck with begging again. Nah, I don't think so. But get turned away at every attempt. So we raid the Blue Palace Garden instead, picking more flowers that we can sell for a small profit. Yeah, I think I think we're improving. This can't be happening. At least in my heart. 
Okay, just this once. Thank you, thank you. Oh, is it? Oh, is this it? Yes! Level Fresh two. Fish. Okay, Fresh all right. Level two is gonna be huge. This is an absolute game changer. After taking a quick nap, we claim the performer perk. Once a day, this lets us channel all our musical talent into one actually decent performance, after which we're likely to get tips. The quality of our performance increases with our speech skill, and wealthier listeners are likely to give us better tips. Let's try it out. Let's take everything we've learned and make this our best performance yet. Need something? Hey, we're doing it! See, I was improving. That's some genuine clapping. Some genuine... Genuine appeal we've got. I think they're enjoying it. Let's hope they tip us. Speak. Whoa, that's a huge tip for our first, first actual performance. Huh? That's amazing. Just look at how happy Jeremy is. He's really doing it. To celebrate, we spend a chunk of that payout on a nice warm hat. This will help us stand the cold better. Stylish, but we can only give that special performance once a day. So we're back to our usual haunts for the rest of the day. We show off our new hat down in Dragon Bridge and chop firewood for Horgear. Honest gold for honest work. Then on day seven, we entertain him and this other dude with our performance power. It's a smaller and less wealthy audience than we had in Solitude, so we don't make as much money, but village folk need good music just as much as city folk. Maybe you can help me. Horgear offers to pay us if we run an errand for him. He needs us to deliver a set of robes to, uh, Mazaka in blank. How are we supposed to bring this to the person if you don't even know where they are? All right, come on. Come on, Horgear. I like you, but I need more to go off of. Okay, so Mazaka is at the uh, the Solitude Lighthouse. That's pretty close. I guess we'll try it. Like, there's going to be some problem with this quest, isn't there? All right, the door is locked, and we have, have one single lockpick to go off of. Yeah, sorry, Horgear. You're going to need to hire an actual delivery person for this one. Hello, sailors. Would anyone, anyone like a song? Oh, no, uh, you would not like a song. Jesus okay, uh, oof, let's get out of here. I don't know why is he even attacking us. We're just a, oh, wow, there are two of them. Okay, um, we're running, we're running, we're running. We find a good deal on Brook Bass from Advar in the marketplace, then agree to help a vet with an errand. She needs us to run down to the docks. Ah, uh, yes, if she wants to pay the 2,000 gold tariff. Then we'll be all set. Uh, you know, can't you just do her a, a solid and help her out? I suppose I could make an exception. See, there we go. I do like her spiced wine. Here's something for your troubles. Day eight is a cold and rainy one. And as much as we like our new hat, it unfortunately isn't waterproof. So let's spend some time indoors instead. I've got a fun idea. So since the Bars College isn't going to allow us to try out like a, a normal person, I'm going to crash one of their classes. All right. Here Let's we are. try something a bit more fun. Oh, uh, if fun is what you're looking for. Oh, there once was a hero is this the kind of fun you're looking for? I'm going to play over top of him. It's fun for me, at least. Oh, wait, wait, I'm, that was better, ain't wait, I'm, I'm actually playing the song correctly. <gasps> I haven't missed a, s a single note. I'm actually good now. I'm not even, I'm not even using the, the once a day ability. I'm just amazing now. Well, wow, this is... She liked it. This is like one of my best performances. It may be a tip. And he's gonna give me a tip. Well, that went way better than I had any right to. Later, we brave the rain to give our once a day performance for a motley audience near the city gate. We collect 52 gold in tips. Not bad. That night, we can level up again and take the serenade perk. This upgrades our performance power so that women in our audience are more likely to give us better tips or potentially even small gifts. The next day starts with another trip down to Dragon Bridge. This time, we stop by a Stormcloak camp and see if the soldiers posted there would like a song. Hey, it's the bard to be. Oh, he likes <laughs> us. Awesome, we found another audience. And Horgir, Horgir's dancing. He's, he's dancing, blessing. that's the first person we've had who danced. Thank you. Well, that's someone else talking. Here. He gave. This is for you. I don't think it was Horg here, but we had someone who gave us a tip without us even asking. That performance even earned us a buff, inspiring tune, which fortifies our magicka and stamina by 10 points. We play another tune for some passersby in solitude and make 53 gold in tips. Hopefully, we're starting to build up a reputation as a competent bard. All right. Hmm. Wait, there's a posting to hunt a vampire. Wait, is that the vampire that we saw on the road? Yeah. Oh, it's her. Okay, it really is her. That's the vampire. Uh, there's a bounty on her. Hey, you're the mercenary, aren't you? 
What dangers and wonders shall we? Yeah, I barely have enough to hire you for this. Uh, I can hardly wait to find. There's a bounty by killing this vampire who's like right here. What? Okay, all I need you to do is go over there and kill her. That's. She's right there. No, where are you going? Turn around. She's right there. No, Belrand, what are you doing? Okay, there we go. Okay, finally he's gonna attack her. Okay, I'm just gonna hide back here. He's a mercenary. He can handle it, right? She went, she went invisible. Okay, all right. Ooh, all right, she's dead. All right, um, uh, calm down. Uh, everything is fine. This was a vampire. There was bounty on her. Okay, oh, a garnet. All right, we're definitely gonna take that. Okay, oh, so we don't immediately... So we have to find a Vigilant in order to collect the bounty on her. Um, we are not gonna do that right now. So you're just gonna kind of follow me around from now on? Uh, I guess that's all right. On day 10, we warm up at the morning market. We're really getting these basic tunes down pat now. We need to make honest up some of that money we spent work. last night hiring Belrand. The vampire dust we collected sells for a tidy sum. We're so, we're doing so well at these songs now. Day 11's a big one. Now that we have Belrand in tow and a good bit of pocket money, it's time to tackle Dead Man's Respite so we can formally enter the Bard's College. First, let's talk about combat. We're obviously not the fighting type, but that doesn't mean we can't help out Belrand when faced with enemies. In games like D&D, Bards are often a sort of support spellcaster, so that's the style I'm gonna lean into here. We want spells that buff Belrand, rather than dealing direct damage ourselves. We end up buying two tomes, Healing Hands to restore HP to an ally, and Courage, which gives the target extra health and stamina. And we've still got a sword of our own, if we're left with no other choice but to use it. With our spells purchased, let's head out in pursuit of King Olaf's missing verse. It's raining again. Okay, I don't care. We're going to get his verse today. On the way, we luck out and come across a Vigilant of Stendar, who can give us the reward for killing that vampire two days ago. This necklace improves our speech skill. That's like perfect. But well, that worked out great. And the rain still hasn't let up when we finally come to the foreboding ruins of Dead Man's Respite. Okay, we have a zombie. This is up to you, friend. All right, healing, healing, healing. You need some health? All right, take him down. Great. All right, well, that wasn't too bad. I think we can do this. Belrand hacks and slashes his way through the crypts with his phantom doggo helping. We bring up the rear, healing and buffing him like any true support mage would. Of course there's a pit we have to jump into. All right, well, I don't want to, but here it goes. Come on, give me some courage. You are now courageous. Flawless. Oh, well, this garnet's worth quite a lot. We're gonna take that. In the depths of the crypt, we find the missing verse. Apparently, it's been redacted, so maybe this whole trip was pointless. We follow the spectral bard into King Olaf's burial chamber, hoping this leads to a way out. Belrand, please, what are you doing? Don't get invis-walled, no! Got the feeling there's trouble ahead. You think so? Oh, sure, or just clip on through, I guess. <laughs> How did you do that? I mean, I shouldn't complain. <laughs> I really need him. When King Olaf emerges, we hang back, throw Belrand some courage, and let them bring Olaf a final end. Come on, just a few more hits. All right, team, take some healing. And King Olaf is defeated. Uh, excuse me, sir. You know, yeah, okay. Wait. You're dead! Stop talking! Will there ever be a game better than Skyrim? We head back through the dark to Solitude, fortunately avoiding any trouble en route, then pass out at the inn near instantaneously. What an exhausting day. On day 12, we're refreshed and ready to return to the Bard's College. But Belran's not coming with. Uh, hey dude, I'm I'm going someplace like kind of sophisticated, and I don't think your whole um, exposed midriff thing is really gonna fly there. So you stay here. We help the Armo make up some nonsense. I find that highly unlikely. Apparently, the Jarl approves. Unbelievable. And we're good to go. We sell off some of the loot we found in the crypt to the court mage while we're at the palace, bringing us back up to above 500 gold. All flowers will be ours. After sundown, we return to the college to prep for the burning of ah, King Olaf. <gasps> Free food, yes! We'll take meat pie. We're not gonna take all of it though, I'm not gonna hog it. As the effigy burns, our musical career ignites. Viarmo formally welcomes us to the Bard's College and gifts us a whopping 750 gold, courtesy of the Jarl. At last, we've been accepted as a musical student of Skyrim. We wake up the next day at the inn, feeling like a new man. 
We're gonna check in with our new teachers at the college today, but first I wanna share the good news from last night with Horgir, so we set out for Dragonbridge. Uh, oh, okay, hmm, that is an assassin who's, okay, trying to kill me. <laughs> We're gonna run. Uh, hello, someone, please. <laughs> is an assassin chasing me? Yeah, well, someone help, though. Hey, hey, guard, guard! This, this, what are you, help me! Why are you just staring? Go kill the assassin, yeah. What, what are you doing? This is all happening because I left Bell Ran back at the inn. Oh, I have to do that. Why do I have to do this myself? I am not a fighter. Way to be terrible at your job. At least we get to loot the body and grab an amethyst that we can sell. By the way, it's raining again. No one ever told me Skyrim takes place in Seattle. Still, we find a bit of shelter and show Horgear how far our skills have come. Now that we're publicly known as a student of the Bard's College, innkeepers will hire us to perform. In exchange for playing a tune for their clientele, we get a few gold and a free night's stay. Thank you. Here, this is for you. As we build up more of a reputation, we'll get paid more for these bookings. Belrand, I am sorry I made a mistake. Onward to our next adventure. I came close to dying earlier. You can always come with me and protect me now. Your midriff is coming too. We work up a good audience in the streets and earn a tidy 75 gold. Now, if we're gonna have Belrand as our constant bodyguard, we should really get him some better armor. We buy some iron gear from the local smith and still have quite a bit of gold left over. Let's hope our days of poverty are behind us. Next, we go back to the college to see our new professors. They send us on a series of fetch quests to recover stolen instruments lost across the province. We were more hoping that they'd give us lessons. Like, you know, competent teachers, but oh well. How has this school not lost its accreditation yet? Here, I'd like you to have this as a token of my huh? friendship. You're my professor. Wait, you gave me a bottle of wine? Are teachers supposed to be giving their students alcohol? <laughs> These quests will take us from Falkreath to the Rift to the Pale and back again. And so this brings us to phase two of our climb to musical greatness. We're going on tour. We're about to leave solitude for a while, but before we do, we need to make sure we're equipped for the journey. Our clothes aren't warm enough for extended outdoor exposure, and we can't risk getting caught in the cold while we're out trying to find these instruments. Gerard, what are you doing? Divine smile on you, this, friend. This can't be appropriate behavior. You're a professor! We spend almost our entire savings to buy our very own set of mage robes. They're not only warmer than our current gear, but will support our spellcasting. Upon acceptance at the college, we were issued a Bard's Journal. This will track how many different inns around Skyrim we've played at. While we're out on this tour, we'll aim to book performances at any inns we come across to start broadening our reputation. With our shopping done, we say farewell to solitude and leave to catch our carriage. The first lost instrument we're after is located near Falkreath, but I want to start this adventure at the central hub of Skyrim's carriage network instead. That's right, we're heading to Whiterun. Ah, oh, well this is certainly a rustic um, city compared to Solitude. I, I think we'll like it though. Whiterun is home to the famed Bannered Mare Inn, which we definitely want to add to our travel journal. We get hired for a quick show yes. and find the audience quite receptive. Whoa, someone tipped us a flawless scarnet. Uh, I think we're gonna be a hit here. Our room doesn't have the same amenities we're used to at the Winking Skeever, but for this one night, it'll do just fine. Hey, it rains here too. Well, that's one constant in Skyrim, it seems. We're basically broke now after spending so much on our robes, so we need to earn some of that cash back. Fortunately, Whiterun is full of opportunities for us to do so. The local priest pays us to fetch his amulet that he left just down the hall. It's like 50 feet down the hall, dude. In your own catacombs. And the rest of the day is just spent performing around town, working up our reputation with the locals. Oh, there's a caravan here. Skooma, ugh, isn't that like a drug? Yeah, I'll, I'll pass. On day 17, we depart for Falk Reef, taking the scenic route so we can stop in Riverwood on the way. So we enjoy a leisurely stroll down past the local meadery as we turn our gaze south. Riverwood's a quaint little village, at least aside from the fully grown stag rampaging through town. We perform for the inn, but no one here has ever heard of us, so we don't bring in much of a crowd. We take our 10 gold payment and the offer of a free night's stay, but we're not stopping for the day yet. We're continuing on foot to Falkreath, aiming to arrive before nightfall. We make a quick stop at the Guardian Stones west of town and claim the Mage Stone buff. Welcome to Falkreath. We find our way into town just before sunset and head straight to the inn, the Dead Man's Drink. 
We have just enough energy left to put on a quick show before it's time for bed. Today we're going after the first missing instrument, Riorn's drum, located in the nearby Haldir's cairn. We set off early in the morning mists with Belrand in tow. This is it? Okay, yep, Haldir's cairn. Ugh. Well, this looks creepy enough. All right, you got this dude. Let's kill all the phantoms. Okay, there's another. Come on, you got this. <laughs> Only a fool tries to kill. Ugh. All right, is this it? I think this is the boss room. All right, Belrand, you're going in first. Bjorn's drum. Okay, let's grab this. Now to finish the boss. All right, come on. Okay, take your courage, take your healing. Take everything you need to finish this. Go, Belrand, go. Go, Belrand, go. Yes. Ah, that'll do it. We make it safely back to Falkreath and make a stop by the general store to lighten our inventory. And as much as we'd like to take it easy for the rest of the day, we've got more instruments to recover, so it's back to Whiterun we go. The trip takes the rest of the day, but we put on a good show for the Bannered Mare again before turning in for the night. There are a few familiar faces in the something? audience who are happy to find us back in town so soon. Day 19 is a lovely- Oh, no, it's raining again. Because of course it's raining. Why are you eating your bread in the rain? We've saved up over a thousand gold again and can buy the Stone Flesh spell from the Mage at Dragon's Reach. This should help keep us out of near-death situations. We also pick up a mod-added spell, Wither, which lets us reduce an enemy's attack damage. Just more stuff to keep Belran from dying. Feel free to sing along if you'd like. <laughs> yeah, just like that. That was perfect. You'll be back on your feet in no time. Finally, the weather clears up, and we're good to set off on the trail of our next instrument. This time, we're heading all the way southeast to Riften, so we can then head north and recover Finn's loot. We grab a carriage and settle in for a long ride. It's fully night when we arrive in Riften, so we just play for our room at the Bee and Barb Inn, and then call it a day. Right this way. Okay, you two are wearing mm -hmm. the exact same clothes and you look very similar. Are you twins? We slept in late today, recovering from our long ride to get here, so we decide to leave Finn's loot for tomorrow and instead pay a visit to nearby Iverstead. There'll be another tavern there that we can check off our performance log. Looks like they know how to recognize talent around here. That's good. What do we have here? Creepy shack? Oh, there's a cellar. Hmm. What is this place? What? Well, it sounds like someone's sick. Re oh, oh, they're selling scoop. Oh. Yeah, I think we just found a skooma hideout place. Yeah, sounds like they're all very ill. We should definitely leave. We reach the town of Iverstead, lurking in the shadow of the mountains, and drop into the Villamir Inn. It's a small but enthusiastic crowd we find here. As we continue to improve our skills, we're finding a receptive audience nearly everywhere we go, even just from strangers in the street. On day 21, it's raining yet again. We consider heading back to Riften despite the storm, but just a few steps out of town, we're already getting a chill, so guess we're gonna wait it out. Once the weather clears, we enjoy a lovely walk through the rift. We retire to the inn, eager to catch a good night's sleep, before going after Finn's loot and the bandits who've stolen it tomorrow. It's now day 22, let's go get that loot. We pass through Shore's Stone on our way north to the cave where we think the loot is located. Is this it? All right, Stony Creek Cave. Here we go. As expected, we have some bandits inside to contend with. Ooh, uh, oh, oh, okay, so Belrand, I think Belrand might be dead, and that guy is really strong. Uh, okay, we gotta get out of here, we gotta get out of here. Excuse me. Uh, we're running, I, I hope, I hope Belrand's okay. Oh, oh, you're fine, you're fine. Okay, he's all right, that water's freezing cold. Okay, all right, well that went terribly. Oh, we have to warm up. <laughs> I think these, these soldiers will share their fire, I hope. Have another thing coming. Oh. All right, well, well that was awful. We have to rethink this. That guy was so strong in there. Keep your guard up. I tried, how are we gonna do this? Okay, I am going to use a tried and true strategy in Skyrim. Okay, he's, don't be spotted us, of sneaking in, grabbing the quest item, and leaving, and we are leaving. No fighting. Let's get out of here. Uh, and we accomplish our mission, hooray. Instead of going back to Riften, we can now head northwest towards Windhelm, where we'll find another carriage stop. 
Also, we can drop by Kynesgrove on the way to perform at another new inn. Kynesgrove's a little mountain village with not much aside from the Braidwood Inn itself. We play a quick show, but then continue on to Windhelm before the sun sets. Here we can find two different inns that'll hire us, the Dark Elf Quarter Club and the historic Candle Hearth Hall. That's another three inns that we've added to our list of performance venues in one day. We're getting a lot done on this tour. We'll be heading north to find Pantia's Flute next, which is about midway between Winterhold and Dawnstar. Let's start by chartering a carriage to Winterhold. Well, this place is miserable. The local inn, at least, is warm and well-populated, so we find an enthusiastic audience and make 90 gold in tips. What do you need, bard? Oh, she knows we're a bard. It seems our reputation precedes us. All right, let's go get this last instrument. Our clothes manage to keep us warm enough that we don't take any severe cold penalties, and we locate Hobbs Fall Cave. Uh, yep, and we have necromancers as expected. All right, you got this. You've got courage, and I've got healing for you. Bellrand, go! Flawed Varla Stone. Oh wow, this is worth a ton. Friends and I used to play Seek the Wampus in caves much like this. Uh, okay, but that is completely useless information. We warm up again with some local soldiers, who are happy to share their fire in return for a song. Then we nearly die to a party of giant spiders, before reaching the safety of Dawnstar. So you're having trouble with nightmares? You know what might help you sleep? Some nice music. This, <laughs> this woman's just glaring at me. I can't just tell if she's like so entranced or if she hates it. We perform for a crowd at the inn who are too busy griping about nightmares to truly appreciate our talent. Day 25, we've now recovered all three missing instruments. So it's time to wrap up our tour. First, we're gonna drop by Morthal, our final stop before we return to Solitude. Don't get too far ahead. Uh <laughs> I like him saying that, like, we're, we're rushing the song, we're getting too far ahead in the song. Does Belran know anything about music, though? We cut through Morthal's swamps, heading west, until we find ourselves all the way back where this journey began, 24 days earlier, the Solitude Docks. We've already come so far since that day, but our journey is far from over. <laughs> like, as soon as we get here, it starts to rain again. Do we just bring it with us at this point? There is no way I can pay you what this loot is worth. Oh, can you try? But I can teach you a few tricks uh, I've learned over the years. Yeah, I'm not interested in those. We also made a lot of money on this tour. We're up to almost 3,000 gold, even with a full food supply. After living in a single outfit for over a week, we can afford to treat ourselves to new clothes. That's better. Now we fit in among the nobility of solitude. Hearing that we're back in town, the locals pack into the Winking Skeever, eager for our grand return performance. We even convince Lisette to play a duet with us, and it's a big hit. Dude, this, this really is not a song to rave to. Also, please get out of my face. With our feet sore from days of travel and our familiar room at the Winking Skeever to comfort us, we enjoy a bottle of mead and fall asleep eating a baked potato. As we rest, we unlock the feat Encore, which makes our once-a-day performance power no longer only once a day. Always glad to talk to a bard. Welcome to college. People talk constantly in this class, and the teacher the teacher does nothing about it. The other bards and many of the city folk now know and admire us. You've done well. May the gods watch over your battles, friend. We're no longer an outsider here in solitude, but a respected member of the populace. Back from some adventure, I bet. So where do we go from here? How much higher can we ascend? Purchasing the prime home of Proudspire Manor seems like a worthy achievement. Solitude is the center of the arts, so why live anywhere else in Skyrim? This manor would become a worthy monument to our success. Of course, it does cost 25,000 gold. To get that kind of money, we can't just be an adequate bard. We need to become extraordinary, a musical icon. But that alone isn't enough. We need to pack performance venues, sell out inns wherever we go. And we need something that'll set us apart from your everyday bard. Despite just wrapping up our tour, there are still a few inns around Skyrim that we haven't hit yet. We can bolster our reputation further by going back and booking performances there. So on day 27, we take a carriage out to Whiterun again, then stride across the tundra to Rorikstead. Here we introduce ourselves to the clientele of the Frostfruit Inn. <laughs> These people rave to some of the slowest songs I play. <laughs> Ah, now that is a beautiful morning view across the tundra. 
Like, should I even be surprised that it's pouring rain at this point? We've got a good fan base in Whiterun, so instead of drenching through to our skin aboard a carriage all day, we decide to spend the day with them and collect more tips for our real estate fund. Okay, our uh, speech scale is high enough now that some of the plants that used to sell for zero, we could actually sell for a coin. I've been looking for you. Oh. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. Looks like that's it. Got to go. Okay, a letter from Viarmo. All right, what's Viarmo want? The business at the Bard's College? Okay, he doesn't really say. Uh, so next time we're back in Solitude, we'll chat with him then. But our next stop is the Nightgate Inn, a notoriously isolated and cold little tavern northeast of the city. How is it colder here than it was in Winterhold? Well, this place is awful. Well, at least it's another venue to check off our list. Day 29 is spent entirely in travel, as we continue east to Windhelm, then charter a very long carriage ride all the way to Markarth. We get to Markarth around noon the next day, and are exhausted from not sleeping on the ride. Even so, we help the townspeople take their mind off the recent public murder incident with some music, then book a performance at the Silver Blood Inn. It was Margaret. Poor woman. She Can you please stop talking about the murder? Sleep. I'm trying to perform. Yeah, but... Our fatigue building to extreme levels, we manage to make it out to the old Rolden Inn, play a couple tunes to earn our free room, then pass out for an extended period. That's two more inns checked off our list. Hey, even dead people enjoy a good song. We've now performed for every inn in Skyrim, so our reputation should be soaring. With all that accomplished, it's time to return to Solitude and see what Viarmo wants to talk to us about. All right, Viarmo, you have a job for me? I do. Perform for, oh, he wants us to perform for um, the, uh, the Jarl of, of Riften. Oh, that's awesome. We're now officially a renowned bard, known and loved throughout the province. Our friends adore us. It's like the ancient legends. You are pleasant company. Even strangers pretend to know us. Hello, friend. Azura bless you. So what's next? You've done us great service. Do we content ourselves with the view from halfway up the mountain, or do we climb to the summit? We're gonna head to Riften and perform for the Jarl soon, but we can't let ourselves stop there. Just being Jeremy isn't good enough. We need to find our secret spice, a little extra kick of showmanship. What we need is a bit of rock and roll. We take our new act to the streets, and our fans are immediately smitten. But every good rock star needs a name. We left our past in High Rock behind to embrace our future in Skyrim, but let's bring a trickle of those origins back into who we're gonna be next. Say farewell to Jeremy, and hello to High Rocker. On day 34, we make our grand return to the Bee and Barb in Riften, performing for a crowd that has long been missing us. Then we strut on over to the Jarl's palace and give them a taste of what real music is. Thank you. Here, this is for you. Our reward is an enchanted necklace, perhaps one of the Jarl's great treasures. Well, this is getting sold real quick. We're now sitting at a whopping 7,000 gold. Proudspire Manor's still quite a ways out of reach, but we can afford to treat ourselves to something special. Hmm. Well, how bad could the skooma really be? The, the cats are really into it. We'll just take, like, one. You know, life in the public eye could get pretty stressful. We can just take one and try it sometime. Viarmo pays us another 200 gold for fulfilling Jarl Layla's request, and sends us next to play for Jarl Skald. Unsurprisingly, we're in very high demand. We catch the red-eye carriage to Dawnstar, and put on another great show. Belran's being too aggressive with the Jarl. <laughs> like, don't get us thrown out, dude. Then we gotta get in some fan service, swinging by the docks and the inn to please our ever-growing fan base. Then back in Solitude, we give the show of a lifetime to a packed crowd at the Winking Skeever. This is our home turf. As far as our adoring fans are concerned, we can do no wrong. Turns out Scald loved us so much, he wants us back for an encore the very next day. We didn't really expect there to be so much constant travel as a rock star, but guess it's just part of the job. The next day, we're called to play for Jarl Ravencrone of Morthal, and uh, her backup dancers apparently. Then we head straight to Whiterun for a sold-out show at the Bannered Mare. There's barely room in our schedule even to breathe anymore. But we are carrying around 10,000 gold, and that's not even including a couple gemstones we've yet to sell. All our hard work is definitely paying off. So we treat ourselves to a bottle of rare Argonian blood wine before getting back on stage for our second set. Day 40 brings us to Markarth to perform for the Jarl whose name I can never remember. But strangely, Jarl What's-His-Face doesn't take to our unique musical stylings the same way the other Jarls have. I think we messed up. I think, 
Oh, we messed up so bad. That, sound, that, was, that was more of like a Jeremy performance. Jeremy's the one who makes mistakes. I'm High Rocker. High Rocker does not make mistakes. High Rocker is a true star. I just need to relax. Everything's fine. I'm just gonna take the skooma and see what happens. Okay. All right. Everything's fine. Oh. <gasps> okay. Um, where am I? Oh, I must be in my own... I must be like in my own brain. A mind palace of all my like memories and internal like sentiments. This is how I find enlightenment. This is how I find the missing piece. Okay, there must be something inside here. There must be by going in my own mind, I'm finding something critical. No, 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 no. wait. The silver blood inn has plenty of strong- I wasn't ready to wake up yet. Clean rooms. Okay. Oh, we have to get back there. We have to get back there and find what's missing. No, no, the cats are gone. Okay, we have to find them. We have to find those cats. We need more. We need more skooma. Okay, they're here. Oh, that was close. We need more. We need more skooma. Need something? Yes, I need the skooma. The best skooma you have. We have to get back to that mine palace place. There's, that's gonna contain the secret to how we achieve our, our ultimate success. We have a performance booked at the Bannered Mare, but mostly rush through it. We gotta wrap this up so we can go up to our private room and try the skooma again. All right, you're guarding the door. I'm gonna take the skooma and go back to that, uh, the mine palace. All right, here we go. Why isn't it working? Oh. Oh, I feel very sick. Uh, okay, it's not working. Um, oh, I'm, I'm, think I'm gonna pass out for a while. Oh, is this the bed? Okay, I think that this is the bed. Oh, I do not feel good at all. Why didn't that work? Why didn't that work? It was those cats, wasn't it? They gave us the wrong, the wrong skooma or something. No, they're gone. They're gone again. We must have gotten the wrong skooma. Okay, no. Calm down. Everything's probably fine. It, it was just a fluke. I have more skooma. We'll try it again someplace here. All right, surely this one's gonna work. Oh yeah. All right, I'm feeling it now. Oh, all right, this this one is good. Yeah, here we go. This is the one. This is this this is perfection. This is what I was looking for. The next day, we're back at the B and Barb with some of our most devoted fans, but we're not much interested in performing right now. Has anyone seen the cats? You know, the 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 cats with the tents who who sell the the the, the potions and things. Okay, if I were Skooma, where would I be? I really need your help. My job at the Riften Fishery is in danger. I tried some Skooma a year ago, and ever since then, I can't stop. I get my Skooma from Sarthas Idrin. He has some sort of a setup over the Riften warehouse. We inform the Jarl about Riften's underground Skooma operation. And of course, we're so famous and trusted that she has no issue letting us resolve the matter on our own. Excellent. Here, this is the key to the warehouse. All right, take him out, take him out. Go around, you got this. You got this, have some courage. Oh, he's got the stuff here somewhere. Healing, healing, go Belrand, go. All right, that's it. We've done it. Now just to find it. <gasps> we got the jackpot. It's all right here. Oh, we're loaded. All right, I should just need one more. Anxiety, filling up every space, no privacy. I am Skuma. It's taking over, damn no closure, moving closer. Ah, no, 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 he's coming, he's coming. Be a loner. <laughs> so kiss me sober, looking over Look at that, shoulders. look at that. Like moving boulders just to get out of the home, it sucks. I've had enough, I don't want to feel the stuck. Bellrand? I feel sick. I got nightmares. This place is I weird. Build up until I can't hear. Please, do you have any skooma? You gotta have some you skooma. You got some nerve. Skooma, skooma, please just get just out little, of my sight. Please, please take pity, please. That's close enough. All right, now where is that place? I know it was around here. Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? That my mind fills up into a creature. much deeper. So, we made a mistake. We thought a life of fame and incessant admiration would bring us happiness, but it left us feeling just a touch incomplete. Like there was some missing puzzle piece that we thought might lie at the bottom of a bottle. We may have blown a bunch of money and destroyed our reputation in Riften, but we're strong. We can come back from this. We can find a better balance, some way to live not just as High Rocker, but at least a little bit as Jeremy. On day 48, we help harvest crops in Dragonbridge. Then we pick some flowers to sell to the local alchemist. 
The last one right here. Can't believe we let this control us. Good riddance to you. When we need some cheering up, we help bring cheer to others, playing a happy little tune, not as a rock star, but as a bard, who may not have everything quite figured out yet. We didn't meet our goal of working up the funds to buy Proudspire Manor, but maybe that's for the best. There are other ways to live, quieter ones, away from the city and all the ambition it stirs up within us. We spend 5,000 gold to buy the Scrivener's Croft, a humble cottage just outside Dragonbridge. It's not the excessive monument to our own fame that Proudspire would have been. Instead, it comes with a beautiful garden and just enough space inside for everything we could ever need. It has a cozy reading nook, a rustic alchemy room, and even a creepy mannequin standing guard upstairs. The bedroom reminds us of our room at the Winking Skeever, where we grew from a clueless boy to a, well, still rather clueless young man, but at least we can recognize that now. Hey buddy, you wanna see my new house? It's super cozy. <laughs> he loves it, he's speechless. On day 50, Viarmos booked us to perform for none other than Jarl Elisif herself at the Blue Palace. So we throw on our high rocker costume and make the rounds through solitude once again. We may be a bit rusty after all the skooma and, well, malnutrition, so it's probably not our best performance. But what an honor to play at the Blue Palace, in the same court where Viarmo recited the poetic Edda so many weeks ago, before our initiation as an official bard of Skyrim. But it's not performing for the Jarl that brings us the most joy. It's our return to the streets, brightening the day of whoever happens to pass our way, whether it be out at the market or on the way up to Castle Dower. As the afternoon wanes towards evening, we change back into our everyday clothes and head home. Because that's what life is after all. Not a race up the mountain, but a series of every days. Each one a new opportunity to make a fresh start. The rain pours down as we're strolling through Dragonbridge. But if it's not enough to dampen Horgir's enthusiasm for chopping wood, it doesn't have to drive us inside either. What better way to enjoy the rain than with good friends and a bit of music? We call it a day early, watching the storm pass in peace from our front porch, and relieved to have an evening away from the city crowds and booked out tavern shows. Maybe it's just the skooma still taking its toll, but the pouring rains are starting to sound like their own kind of music. We've got a lot of work to do over the next couple days to get our stuff put away and our new home organized, but I know the perfect place to start. Congratulations, mannequin. Tonight you get to be High Rocker, and I get to just be Jeremy. I think there's something to like in both of us. As the rain sings us a lullaby, we climb into our warm bed, eager to get a good night's rest before day 51 of our journey and all of our days to follow.